Bone infection is a real problem in the United Kingdom. If we think that in 2012 there were 10,000 operations performed on patients who had an infection in a bone or a joint. And the majority of those followed other operations such as joint replacements or treatment of fractures. So this is really a very big burden for the National Health Service and for patients generally in the community. Osteomyelitis is a deep bone infection. It can enter the body through different ways. It can be spread through the blood. Uh, it can also enter the body through an open wound or through surgery. When the bacteria is spread through the blood, it will settle down uh, at the end of a long bone where it will create an infection. And within a few days, uh, there will be uh, an increased pressure, a spreading of the bacteria to the surrounding bone, and we will have a chronic osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is a severe healthcare problem. Um, it presents in patients in two ways. Firstly, we can have an acute or a sudden onset of the infection, and this can make the patient very sick, so they can be admitted to hospital and have to have very urgent treatment for that. That's less common than the more chronic presentation where patients may have chronic ill health and recurrences of infection over many months or even sometimes over several years. Uh, what we see now is that in the United Kingdom we are performing a very large number of joint replacements, particularly of the hip and knee. If we think that there were 180,000 of these performed last year and about one in every hundred will develop an infection. So a patient who comes into hospital with arthritis to have a joint replacement, they don't really expect that the next thing that will happen to them is that they will have a chronic infection, which will then require enormous resource, enormous time and treatment to try and get control of that infection. And so it's really quite a big problem for the patient and for the healthcare service, uh, particularly as we're trying to increase the number of joint replacements and increase the treatments for a wide range of orthopaedic conditions. The other group of patients who have a terrible time with bone infection are those who have had a fracture or who have had an infection in childhood after an injury, and they then develop this long-standing chronic recurrent osteomyelitis. And we see patients who have had infection for, for perhaps 20 or 30 years. And every year or two, they're back in hospital for another treatment, another operation, more antibiotics. And over several years, they then become socially isolated. They may not be able to do their work. If they have a mortgage, they may not be able to pay the mortgage. So they have all sorts of effects on their general life and on their relationships. And one of the real... Uh, principles of treatment of bone infection is that we have to try and get away from having patients with years and years of chronic ill health. And some of the innovations that have been developed in recent years have tried to limit the treatment time and the number of operations that patients require to get control of this disease. In Oxford, uh, we have developed a bone infection unit, uh, which is the only unit of its kind in the United Kingdom. And this unit treats all patients with infections in the bones and joints. And it's based on a fairly simple principle. That is that we need a team of all the physicians and surgeons together in one place who can deliver all of the parts of the treatment for the patient. So, for example, when a patient is referred to us from, from anywhere in the United Kingdom, they will come to a combined clinic, they will see their surgeon, they will see a plastic surgeon, they will see a bone infection physician and a microbiologist all together at the one clinic appointment. From that appointment, we can then develop the investigations and the treatment plan for that patient. They will then come into the hospital and have a single episode of care, which will involve establishing the diagnosis, doing the treatment of the bone and of the limb itself, delivering the antibiotics, whether it be tablets or intravenous antibiotics or antibiotics implanted into the bone itself. And then the patient will be followed up by that team over the following weeks or months. I had a road traffic accident in 1982, um, which resulted in seven compound fractures, a broken ankle, a dislocated kneecap, and um, severe trauma to my leg. It was discovered that I had infection, so I had hyperbaric treatment for three hours 
twice a day. Um, after that, after the, we found out that I had liquid gangrene, I had a muscle transplant from my shoulder down into my leg. And that procedure took 22 hours and I was told that I used up 18 pints of blood. From then onwards, um, I had to, literally had to dress my leg twice, sometimes three days a, um, a day because of um, the bone infection that I had. Um, unfortunately, there was nothing available for the treatment that I've now received, but um, it was just a case of me managing and just trying to get through as much as I could. The situation I'm in now is that I've had this treatment where the bone infection has been removed, um, inside my leg has been cleaned up completely. I've been on a course of three antibiotics. I'm now on this Lazarus frame and um, it's turned my world around. I will be now be able to walk in a straight line. Obviously I won't have to dress my leg anymore. And also um, my daughter and my family have never seen me with a straight leg. And um, the pain and suffering, which I will suffer now, obviously as things progress, but gradually that will go. And like I said, I'll be able to walk without a limp. And it's just brilliant. If I knew anybody in my situation, well, I would definitely be recommending this treatment because it does turn your life around. And I'm really grateful. Antibiotic resistance has been recognized as a major global health concern. In early 2013, the Chief Medical Officer for England, Professor Dame Sally Davis, uh, recognised this and in fact likened the emergence of antimicrobial and antibiotic resistant organisms to being as significant to the globe as the threat of global warming. Uh, later in 2013, the UK government hosted a meeting of G8 representatives and among other things focused specifically on the emergence of resistant microorganisms and requested that the G8 focus energy, effort and resource on investigation of new antimicrobial agents, investigations into antibiotic resistance. So globally antibiotic resistance is being recognised as an important issue. Specifically in the treatment of osteomyelitis, antibiotic resistant organisms make treatment very difficult. The Nuffield Orthopaedic Centre and the Bone Infection Unit were very much promote and work to a multidisciplinary approach to treatment of bone and joint infection. Working with our surgeons, we're endeavouring to utilise antibiotics in the most prudent, sensible way that we can. Traditionally, osteomyelitis requires prolonged systemic antibiotics, usually as an adjunct to surgery, and we're interested in, in exploring with them the applicability of locally delivered antibiotics. While this has been done for many years in orthopaedic practice, there is a relative lack of evidence and we're hoping that we can develop more of an evidence base as time and experience goes on using both local antimicrobials together with systemic treatment. This may allow us to shorten the treatment durations that we've traditionally used for osteomyelitis and thereby reduce the selection pressure for resistant organisms. Resistance tends to emerge where there's high volume antibiotic use. When more people are exposed to antibiotics, the chances of resistance emerging is increased. It's worth bearing in mind that it's the organism that's resistant to the antibiotic rather than the individual. However, once a resistant microorganism is established in an individual, the potential is that organism can then spread to others. We're facing potentially the spectre where some infections may be untreatable given the emergence of resistance and given that there are relatively few new antimicrobial agents emerging. And it's with that background that we want to examine together with our surgeons the most effective way of using antimicrobials in the management and treatment of osteomyelitis because I think we have a resource that at the moment is relatively limited and we need to be prudent, apply good stewardship principles and look for unique ways of treating infection that may actually reduce our requirement for antibiotic use. In the area of bone infection, there have been a lot of advances in recent years. If we think about perhaps 10 or 15 years ago, many patients were told that this was an untreatable condition. 
and there was a, a great deal of fear around that the treatment of such an infection would end up with an amputation. That's now very unusual. In our own series, uh, less than 1 in 120 patients have an amputation at, uh, at the end of their treatment. So the majority of treatments are very successful. The main advances have circulated around three key areas. Firstly, getting the correct diagnosis of exactly what infection the patient has. Secondly, doing an operation which deals with all of the components of that infection. So removing the infected bone, removing the infected soft tissue, and then being able to reconstruct the limb so that we are putting back bone, we're putting back muscle and skin, so that the patient has a limb that they can use after the treatment. And then the last key area is the delivery of appropriate antibiotics. And this has been quite a contentious area over, over years. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about whether we give antibiotics into a vein or whether we can use tablets. Uh, there's discussion about how long we can give antibiotics for. And then more recently, there has been interest in placing antibiotics inside the bone to deliver very high levels of antibiotic and to kill off the bacteria exactly where the infection is. Now, in Oxford, we have had quite a lot of experience of this local antibiotic treatment inside bones over the last uh, 10 or 12 years. And it's a real area for uh, research in the future, and certainly it's an area that we think needs to be developed much further. Cerebent has been on the European and the US market since 2005, and we have performed over 40 preclinical and clinical studies on patients with a trauma and orthopedic different kind of orthopedic diseases and the product seems to fulfill uh, its aim to remodel to bone within a year in all kind of patients. During the beginning of this year in 2013 we launched a product containing the antibiotic gentamicin to treat the uh, deep bone infections and we are extremely excited to be able to collaborate with the Nuffield Orthopedic Center here in Oxford and with Mr. McNally. The interesting thing with cerement impregnated with gentamicin is the combination of a material that flows and contains an antibiotic uh, and the aim of treating and preventing uh, bone infections. The flowability means that the material goes into the bone and into the bone channels and find also very remote bacteria hiding in the bone channels. Uh, with the aim of, of killing these bacteria and prevent the reinfection, while at the same time building bone in the defects created by the infection. This means that we can hopefully in one stage both treat the bone defect and prevent the infection from reoccurring. In many of these patients uh, the case has been that they have been operated upon several times at different, different stages, first to treat the infection, then to transplant bone and then maybe treat the infection again. And our hope is to find out a treatment algorithm, how to do this in, in one single step. And that is what Mr. McNally is looking for right now in his uh, early uh, patient studies. Bone Support was created in 1999 and it developed a product platform called Cerement. One of the uh, primary reasons that we've developed Ceramet was actually to be able to provide a solution to physicians for um, treating osteomyelitis, which is bone infection that affects more than 150 million people every year. Uh, Ceramet allows for focused delivery of antibiotic into the affected area or the bone, and then that allows us to provide a very focused treatment for a specific disease, and we believe at Bone Support that that is the future of medicine.